Hi everyone, welcome to my lesson. According to the syllables, today we're gonna have a lecture on the theme cross cultural competency. Let me introduce you with the plan of the lesson. During this lecture, I will give you information and knowledge about cultural competency. We'll give you introduction to cross-cultural competency. We will develop cross-cultural competency and we will work on cross-cultural competency at workplace. You'll have a general knowledge about cross-cultural competency journey and you will learn cultural competency in healthcare. And of course, you'll get uh, information about cultural competency in older adult. Okay, let's get down to our lecture. One of the worst yet easiest mistakes people can make is to assume that other people are just like them. People from different cultures see and do things in many different ways. Let's take a look at cultural competence. Cultural competence is the ability to interact effectively with people of different cultures. A culturally competent person has the respectful awareness and understanding of cultural differences. There are four components to cultural competence. Let's take a look at each. First is awareness of our own cultural worldviews and our reactions to people that are different. Next is our attitude towards cultural differences. This reflects a willingness to honestly understand our beliefs and values about cultural difference. Third are our cross-cultural skills. This component addresses the importance of practicing cultural competence, including nonverbal communication, to become effective cross-culturally. Although some people are more naturally culturally competent, most of us have to put an effort into developing this skill. This requires honestly examining our prejudices and biases, actively developing cross-cultural skills, learning from role models, and having a positive attitude about cultural issues. The key to cross-cultural success is awareness. Being aware of how culture influences your interpretation of others, your own behavior, and how people from other cultures may see you. Understanding why we do things in certain ways, how we see the world, and why we react the way we do is an important part of being culturally aware. Cultural awareness can improve performance in culturally diverse organizations or when an organization's customers are diverse. Let's take a look at the increasing demand for cross-cultural competence. Walk into any organization today and you'll see cultural differences. The demand for cross-cultural competence will only increase among organizations and governments around the globe. Consider the dizzying array of forces that currently affect organizations worldwide. Organizational strategies must be designed to make the most of national advantages as leaders locate critical aspects of their value chains in the most optimal location for sustainable competitive advantage. And the rise of terrorism and fanaticism has incited culture class the world over, creating a dire need for effective cultural understanding and communication. Most companies are marketing and selling to the ever more diverse customer. Their products must appeal to all sorts of different tastes, and service and knowledge-based solutions must be sensitive to cultural differences. Leaders, managers, and HR departments must hire, develop, and manage to lead the globally-based multicultural workforce thanks to growing levels of migration and partnering. These trends are affecting every kind of organization that competes today. Cross-cultural competence development enables all kinds of people to be more effective amid cultural complexity. Individuals can improve their capabilities in cross-cultural competence, develop personally or professionally, and learn how to better work and live in an increasingly diverse world. Cross-cultural competence is best learned through experiential activities, where the mind and body are engaged together under the supposition that experience is the source of learning and development with academic knowledge. 
The development of global competence is a journey with no end point, an evolution, not a destination. This is true for everyone regardless of position or role. Developing cultural competence in individuals also represents a cultural change for an organization. A cross-cultural competence knowledge base can be informed by many different resources. There are theories, concepts, research, and facts from multiple dimensions of cross-cultural management, including awareness, skills, values, and practices. Research can be conducted from real-world based case studies, stories, exercises, simulations, and discussions with cross-cultural specialists working with individuals and organizations around the world. Knowledge is also gained from personal and professional experience developed from scholars, educators, consultants, global business leaders, and world travelers. We can explore each of these resources to gain a deeper understanding of cultural competence development best practices. Take a building block approach to developing cultural competence for individuals as well as organizations. Trainers should create action plans to guide ongoing development of global competence during and after development workshops. Training should integrate global competence theories, related cases, reflections, exercises, as well as assessment tools. Imagine you need to prepare to deliver successful cultural competence development experiences. You would need to set up a learning environment to help you cultivate cultural awareness and develop trust. Your goal is to encourage participants to initiate their own cross-cultural competence journey. It's important to understand the changing global business environment and how and why diversity is growing in organizations. You can use stories to frame the ongoing need for cultural competence and the challenges that might be involved. Cultural competence development may also shift a personal focus to an organizational one, exploring the often untapped values of global competence, bringing to organizations the ways in which people around the globe are similar and different. The cultural competence journey must explore dimensions of culture and the nature of prejudice and bias, and provide numerous tools for self-examination of cross-cultural awareness. Unpacking culture includes understanding the complexity of values in cross-cultural environments, the challenges arising from conflicting values, and the need for values alignment. Leaders and managers require skills to manage multicultural teams, motivate and inspire people who are culturally both similar and different, and learn how to effectively lead, coach, and mentor people in diverse environments. Individuals can cultivate a cross-cultural mindset and experience lifelong learning. The world is becoming more and more interconnected and people from vastly different contexts and backgrounds now come into contact on a regular basis, whether at university, in their work or in other everyday situations. Most people assume that these intercultural situations are limited to when members of different national cultures meet for example, between a German and an Indian citizen. The reality is, however, that every situation is intercultural in which we encounter a person who comes from a different context to us and who does not share much of our understanding of normality. While we're confident of the rules and norms of behavior in many usual situations, in many intercultural situations we feel insecure. This makes the intercultural encounter difficult because we don't interact and communicate in a natural way. In order to overcome this problem, more and more people are attending specialized intercultural training workshops. To enable the participants to become effective in intercultural situations, the desired objective is often said to be intercultural competence. But what is intercultural competence? Let's take a closer look. In fact, every intercultural situation is one in which two individuals meet. The prerequisite for mastering such a situation is the competence to act effectively which is made up of several part competencies. 
These part aspects of effective action can be seen on three levels. Our knowledge, our attitudes, but also our behaviour. A pillar of these competencies is specialist competence. Here, on the level of knowledge, we need to possess specialist knowledge. However, it is equally important that we are capable of applying our specialist knowledge and also acting in an appropriate and motivated manner. A further aspect of acting effectively is methodical competence. While interacting, it is important to know methods that will serve as appropriate tools in each situation. However, it is not enough to know these methods. We must be capable of putting them into practice. There is also another important type of competence, and that is the social competence. When we are socially competent, then we not only have knowledge of social rules, but are also capable of implementing these in social situations. Finally, we also have the appropriate motivation required in order to want to put our capabilities into practice within social interaction. Furthermore, we need to train self-competence for which self-reflection is particularly important. On the attitude level, self-competence can be seen through our motivation and willingness to learn, while on the behavioural level, it expresses itself through constructive criticism and responsibility. Once we have trained these part competencies, we can act effectively in most familiar situations. In an intercultural situation, however, this familiarity and confidence is lacking. In this case, people with differing backgrounds and assumptions need to communicate with each other. These backgrounds don't have to be completely different and can have similarities and overlaps. Therefore, a situation is not either intercultural or not intercultural, but simply possesses a particular degree of interculturality. In order to master an intercultural situation, one's usual ability to act effectively must be transferred to the unknown situation. So therefore, not only a general acting competence is important, In order to master intercultural situations, we need knowledge and capabilities that ensure the transfer to the unfamiliar context. To this end, we require knowledge about the cultural context of the other, but also the ability to reflect on our own relationship to our culture and also to the foreign culture. Thus, the training of intercultural competence cannot be seen as a competence that is gained once and then complete and finished. In contrast, it is a competence that is an ongoing process and in a constant state of flux. It attempts to combine a variety of key skills while transferring familiar competencies to unfamiliar contexts. This enables us to find a way to communicate and interact effectively, even in the most diverse and unfamiliar situations. Thus, through the negotiation process, normality, plausibility and routine can be re-established while ensuring reciprocity and enabling confident and constructive interaction. This is the goal of intercultural competence. The understanding of intercultural competence presented here is, of course, only one way of viewing things. Theories of intercultural competence are as complex as the intercultural situations themselves. Let's take a look at developing cross-cultural competence. Developing cross-culturally begins when learners become aware of the need for cross-cultural competence. Innovative activities and approaches help guide learners to begin to understand themselves while simultaneously helping them to become more culturally aware. Learners can engage in their development by setting personal and professional development goals. 
goals may formalize a commitment to develop cross-cultural competence and persuade adaptation to cultural differences. Cross-cultural development begins with an understanding of the journey ahead. Learners who can build trust and share experiences and engage in a safe learning environment. Using a variety of learning methods, such as information delivery and discussion, reflection and storytelling, multimedia and printed words will address multiple learning styles. Development is all about creating experiences that make people better and inspire enthusiasm to learn. In leading a cultural competence workshop, there are several steps you need to take to set the tone from the beginning. Welcome participants with a warm, upbeat invitation to the adventure of developing cross-cultural competence. Review the benefits and risks of diversity in organizations. Explore what drives the need for cross-cultural training, the risks for not doing it, and the rewards for investing time and energy to this work. Highlight the continuum of skills we develop in the journey to cross-cultural competence. Lay out the learning objectives for your programs and remind learners that this experience is for the purpose of their learning, so you can be flexible in the order to meet particular needs. Finally, give participants the opportunity to introduce themselves. In cultural competence development, changing deeply held beliefs and habits may not be an effective objective. Rather, it's appropriate for employers to focus on job-related behaviors and work outcomes. We all have bias, but negative consequences of our bias can be muted by attending to the social structures of an organization. People are becoming more culturally diverse in the way they live their lives. They're going to school in different countries, traveling to foreign locations, and expatriating to gain career experience. We often work in organizations with high levels of diversity, and the possible forms of diversity in organizations are many. One way to define the concept of diversity is with distinctions such as relations-oriented versus task-oriented dimensions of diversity and readily detected or surface level versus underlying or deep level diversity. With diversity increasing, managers need to learn how to take advantage of the strengths it offers and minimize any challenges it might create. Some aspects of diversity have been found to directly impact organizational performance. For example, diversity will impact factors such as creativity, problem solving, and intra-organizational communication. Unfortunately, there's a relationship between diversity and prejudice. Prejudice can come from interpersonal attitudes, such as perceived physical attractiveness, where being perceived as more attractive is favored, and proficiency in communication. Though it's difficult to measure whether prejudice and discrimination are declining, they persist, impacting career experience and success through the effects on trust, motivation and performance, improvement, and harassment. Learners can explore their attitudes towards diversity through self-awareness activities. Cultural competence development requires making a commitment to learn, grow, and potentially change. Most people are probably comfortable with how they currently see the world. They already experience different cultures, and they've already determined how to be comfortable in and adapt to new or different environments. Through reflection, learners begin to understand some of their cultural strengths and limitations, as well as their perceptions and judgments. They see that they're both similar and different from others in a group. Let's take a look at developing culturally competent leaders. Leaders play a critical role in transforming cultural differences from a burden into a resource. Successful leaders value cultural difference as a key component of a person an integral ingredient along with knowledge, skills, and experience that makes these leaders unique and creative contributors to the organization. By knowing how to lead, manage, mentor, and coach, successful leaders reduce the potential for stress, miscommunication, disharmony, and prejudice while increasing the possibilities for innovation and clarity. The study of leadership is immense. 
Here, we focus on the aspects of leadership that can prepare you to be a culturally competent leader and manager. We believe leaders must excel in four roles, leader, manager, mentor, and coach, and must choose which of these hats they will wear successfully to address any situation. Organizations and leaders who adopt a values-based management system are better able to innovate, maximize human and organizational potential, and differentiate their organization in the marketplace. Leaders who incorporate the values of cross-cultural competence into their strategies can more fully leverage the benefits of cultural difference, fuel the creativity of their workforce, and enhance performance. Leaders need to bridge awareness of their own values and the cultural and behavioral norms of prevailing cultures in which they operate, applying cultural intelligence to make moral choices and culturally competent decisions. The development of leadership competencies across all roles requires reflection, practice, and experience. Let's take a look at the value of cultural competence development. A commitment to develop cross-cultural competence requires trust, vulnerability, and a willingness to change. Cross-cultural experiences help learners to step back and look at some of the practical needs and benefits involved with increasing cross-cultural competence in the workplace. It's beneficial to reflect on progress and accomplishments made along the cultural competence development journey. Around the world, people are similar to and very different from one another. We're all human beings who seek the same basic human values, ranging from self-direction, pleasure, to stimulation to power, security, conformity, and benevolence. We're also raised with a wide variety of cultures and families. We work in different systems and organizations and don't even realize how much these differences drive our perceptions, our decision-making, or our business dealing. At best, we connect. At worst, our best intentions are marred by culture clash, and culture clash is costly. One major reason for failure when large organizations merge is culture clash. Culture clash increases conflict between members of both firms involved in the merger, which reduces productivity. Conflict may arise in both big and small ways, such as management style, views on pay scales and expenses, perceived roles or performance of each firm, or disappointment in the merger's results. We also need to consider global cross-cultural trends at a macro level and the implication for organizations. The world is shrinking and connecting more and more cultures through everyday communication and knowledge sharing. Now, more than ever, organizations are faced with the goal of doing business in multiple cultural environments, where people and their ability to communicate and build relationships are at the heart of the business. Managers, leaders, and employees are called upon to be fully present, non-judgmental, and participative in creating value for all of the organization's stakeholders. Cultural competence is a necessary capacity for managers, leaders, and in fact all employees who work in all types of organizations. This is true whether companies are large or small, local or global. Globalization has driven companies to use global and international strategies to compete and cooperate in order to increase profits, market share, and share price. They're also looking for globally located talent. New business partnerships are forming between companies and people of different cultural backgrounds in order to enter new markets, understand local customers, leverage the benefits of regional clusters, and compete. Growth is no longer obtained through finding local face-to-face -face customers, but through social media, open platforms, and technology-based relationships. Environmental forces are impacting industries and organizations and motivating people to develop cultural competence. Cultural competence development prompts us to see the depth and breadth of change affecting organizations and teams. What kinds of value will people and organizations gain in terms of reducing costs and increasing financial, social, and human wealth when they increase their level of cross-cultural competence? 
There are several reasons why people and organizations need cross-cultural capabilities and experiences in order to successfully conduct global business. One study of 700 companies worldwide in sectors such as energy, engineering, financial services, and manufacturing show that more than 70% of them plan to increase short-term expatriate assignments. As the world recovers from a global pandemic, new opportunities will be opening up that require global business travel. What's interesting to note, however, is that the two main causes of international business failure are a high failure rate for expatriates and the inability of local managers to appreciate the cultural challenges of doing business overseas. Examining our own cultural experiences helps us to understand the value of global competence in organizations. Let's take a look at the cross-cultural competence journey. Cross-cultural competence development is a necessary foundation for organizational culture change. So how do you create a learning environment in which people can gain cross-cultural competence? Establishing trust is a critical ingredient in productive, open, and safe learning environments. Development also happens best when learners are able to experience others' perspectives through storytelling and appropriate moments of discovery through reflection. Learners become more culturally aware with sensitivity and experience of cultural and inner awareness. When increasing in cultural awareness, it can be helpful to experience some observable cultural characteristics. Music is one way and a powerful one to experience new cultures. Cultures tend to have their own musical styles like the French can-can or American country western, Japanese or Chinese opera, Greek music, Indian star, and more. Music has also been found to help people learn in a variety of ways. It establishes a positive learning state, facilitates a multi-sensory learning experience, enhances imagination, and brings groups together. Music provides inspiration and motivation to learn and sets the scene for important experiences as well as reflection. There's plenty of research demonstrating that cultural competence can be learned. Learning best happens through participation in learning experiences that activate different parts of the brain. Learning new behaviors and mindsets happens when you create new neural pathways in your brain while gently setting aside old tried and true pathways you've used for years. You develop new neural pathways through practice and the use of a mixture of learning styles. Some people learn best through concrete experiences or reflective observation, others through active experimentation or abstract conceptualization, and for some people, a combination of any of these may work best. Dialogues, storytelling, case studies, role plays, inventories, and both individual and group activities facilitate learning. Cultural competence develops when people feel safe enough to examine their cultural foundations and share them with others. It's important to develop trust in a gradual and safe way, facilitate conversations to amplify multiple perspectives, and foster a depth and breadth of cultural awareness. Be curious and ask questions when people comment or tell stories. Ask them to define the words they use, share their thoughts and feelings, and paint a full picture of the complexity of their experience. And be honest in return. Be willing to share your own stories, cross-cultural experiences, and life lessons, whether you view them as successes or failures. Sharing failures or situations in which you've overcome personal or professional obstacles builds connection, especially, and creates trust. Be willing to follow the conversation where it leads. Sometimes unplanned conversations lead to deeper understanding and learning experience. Ask learners to suspend judgment and to be who they really are as they become more aware of themselves and others. There are several important strategies for successfully implementing a cultural competence development program. As you commit to your own cross-cultural competence journey, you will more fully understand the possibilities and processes. 
It's also important to identify your development objectives. Some of the intended outcomes of cross-cultural competence development are the following. Develop awareness of the issues, dimensions, implications, and associations of cross-cultural interactions in organizational and team environment. Develop an appreciation for the acceptance of practical aspects and associated professional and personal benefits of cultural awareness, values, practices, and skills for individuals, teams, as well as organizations. Identify the business case for cross-cultural skills at work and their impact on organizations as a whole. Develop practical skills for working, communicating, and collaborating effectively at all levels with people from differing cultural backgrounds. Help create a corporate culture that values differences while celebrating the global mindset and cross-cultural competence needed to successfully interact in today's interdependent world. Appreciate the importance of the value congruency, the fit between personal, organizational, and cultural values, and practice using methods to align values with the organization's vision and mission. Cultural competence development requires flexibility, creating unique experiences that meet the needs of all types of learners. We have to start by understanding our current perceptions of our own cross-cultural competence and cultural awareness. Much of our identity develops from awareness, but it takes a while for people to become fully aware of the significant power culture has on their attitude, perception, personality, and behavior. Developing the habits of reflection, self-awareness, openness, and observation in work and life is invaluable in helping people improve cultural competence. The truth of the matter is that the more culturally aware we are of ourselves, the more productive our impact and input may be in our interactions with others. We're always operating with a filter when we experience other cultural beings. The more we are aware of our own cultural-based biases and preconceptions, the more capable we'll be of stepping outside of ourselves and really connecting with and responding and respecting people from other cultures outside of our own. There's a five-step development process, starting with destructive through incapable, blindness, competence, and proficiency when it comes to this type of cultural competence development. Developing cultural awareness is, on an organizational level, far more complex. It requires that organizations have a defined set of values and principles and demonstrate behaviors, attitudes, policies, and structures that enable them to work effectively cross-culturally. They must also have the capability to value diversity, conduct self-assessment, manage the dynamics of difference, acquire and institutionalize cultural knowledge, and adapt to diversity and the cultural context of the communities that they serve. Organizations must incorporate all of these aspects in policymaking and service delivery. Cultural competence in healthcare refers to the ability for healthcare professionals to demonstrate cultural competence toward patients with diverse values, beliefs, and feelings. This process includes consideration of the individual social, cultural, and feelings needs of patients for effective cross-cultural communication with their health care providers. The goal of cultural competence in health care is to reduce health disparities and to provide optimal care to patients regardless of their race, gender, ethnic background, native languages spoken, and religious or cultural beliefs. Cultural competency training is important in healthcare fields where human interaction is common, including medicine, nursing, allied health, mental health, social work, pharmacy, oral health, and public health fields. The term cultural competence was first used by Terry L. Cross and colleagues in 1989, but it was not until almost a decade later that healthcare professionals began to be formally educated and trained in cultural competence. In 2002, cultural competence in health care emerged as a field and has been increasingly embedded into medical education curriculum since then. 
Although cultural competence in healthcare is a global concept, it is primarily practiced in the United States. There's an abundance of literature addressing costly healthcare disparities in the U.S. Disparities are influenced by a number of factors culture, environment, and socioeconomic status, to name a few. Reducing healthcare disparities requires an understanding of these factors and how they influence patients and providers. Stephen Covey once said, We see the world not as it is, but as we are, or as we are conditioned to see it. Each culture has its own set of beliefs and values that affect how patients perceive everything around them, including their health care. Patient compliance and understanding are also influenced by socioeconomic and social factors. Patients don't leave their beliefs at the door when they visit their provider. Culture shapes our thoughts and behaviors. It influences the way patients respond to medical services and the way providers deliver those services. Healthcare providers today must be mindful of the social, cultural, and linguistic characteristics of each patient. This type of awareness is called cultural competence. What happens around us is processed within us and filtered through a cultural lens that helps us interpret every experience we encounter. The meaning we attach to what we see and hear is based upon who we are and what we believe. Ignoring cultural differences diminishes our ability to effectively communicate. This leads to communication gaps, confusion, frustration, and if this relationship suffers, so do health outcomes. But a culturally competent provider demonstrates a respect and understanding of cultural differences and considers how others might react to certain experiences. This helps to reduce healthcare disparities, improve health outcomes, and motivate patients to become equal partners within their own care team. And working as a team with your patients is the best strategy for accomplishing your goals. So you want better health outcomes and greater patient satisfaction? Respect and value cultural differences. Examine and evaluate your own cultural attitudes and make appropriate adaptations to patient care. Understanding your patients will aid them in understanding their health. Cultural competency will promote compliance, mitigate health care disparities, improve health outcomes, and encourage patients to become your partner in their health. How to build cultural competencies into your older adult programming. It is important for organizations who work with immigrant older adults to be culturally competent. This is a set of attitudes, behaviors, and skills that enable you to work successfully in a cross-cultural setting. It is more than just being aware of differences. It implies valuing and adapting to diversity being aware of your own identity and cultural biases, and being able to manage the dynamics of working with diverse groups. A culturally competent organization brings together knowledge about different groups of people and transforms it into standards, policies, and practices. Here are some active steps to guide you in this process. Do a comprehensive cultural competence assessment of your organization. Use the results to develop a long-term plan with measurable goals and objectives to incorporate culturally competent principles, policies, structures, and practices. Include cultural competency requirements in job descriptions. Cultural competency requirements should be apparent from the very beginning of the hiring process. Ensure the people working and volunteering are reflective of the population groups you are working with. Get your staff involved in discussion and activities about cultural competence. Consider holding cultural competence training sessions. 
Make sure the location is accessible and respectful of difference, especially when planning and implementing programs and services. Be considerate of religious holidays and traditions, including cultural religious fasting and various dietary restrictions, and always remember to consider the need for accommodated spaces for prayer. There are many ways that organizations can do this work. Ask others to work with you to develop your organization's cultural competence. Review other organizations' best practices and consult with faith leaders and, of course, community members from the population groups you serve. Ensure the assessment, screening, and intake forms used take culture into consideration. That way you can plan and prepare accordingly. Understand how history for some may cause tension and cultural divides with other groups. Create group guidelines and program-specific activities to foster understanding, respect, and diversity. Arrange for translators and ensure that materials are produced in languages reflective of the populations you're serving. Working towards cultural competence is an ongoing process, and one that requires commitment from individuals at all levels to ensure the creation and maintenance of an inclusive environment.